Hello everybody, welcome back. So it has been a really long time since I posted my last video. My last video was um, me talking about what it is like to be in Korea during the COVID-19 outbreak. I kind of talked about being in quarantine and the social distancing and all of that. And it was kind of right at the height of when everything kind of started. And I had been planning on making another video about what it's like teaching in Korea during this whole coronavirus outbreak. But <laughs> as you will find out in this video, it has been constantly changing. So every time I had sat down and planned out what I was going to say, within the next day or two, what I had been doing changed. And so I finally decided that it's been about three changes and the new one is about to start maybe in the next week or two. So I thought I'm just going to go ahead and make a video and talk about what all those different changes were because I think it's starting to kind of even out and we will be here maybe for a while. So with that, <laughs> today I'm going to be telling you what it is like to be um, a high school English teacher in Korea right now during the coronavirus outbreak. So with that, what I'm going to talk about are first what it was like at the very beginning, so when we were doing online. Then I'm going to talk about where we have been at for the past couple of weeks and then where we're going to be going starting I think in two weeks. So I'm going to be talking about those three things. I'm also going to tell you a little bit about what it's felt like to be the teacher, kind of the atmosphere, and what I've been hearing from around um, Korea, from my friends around Korea. So with that, let's get started. So a little disclaimer, I am a public high school teacher. So I am with Epic English program in Korea and I am at the high school. So what I have experienced is going to be really different from everybody else. You know, I say this every time, but my experiences and my thoughts are just that, they're mine. Um, maybe if somebody is an epic teacher, but with an elementary or a middle school, if they're in a different city, if they're in a different province, if you are a private teacher or a hagwon teacher, the experiences are going to be a little bit different. So please just keep that in mind. And um, when I do have the information from my other friends and other teachers, I will be inserting that in as well. All right, so in Korea, the new semester was supposed to start on March 23rd. So that kept getting delayed and we didn't start online classes until April 9th. So my third grade or 12th grade, you know, seniors in high school, their online classes didn't start until April 9th. And then first and second grade for high school didn't start until later than that. So there was a little bit, you know, of a break time for the students. They were, you know, just kind of doing whatever. And we as teachers were preparing for these online classes to start. So for me, for online classes, what I had to do was each grade I taught, because I teach first, second, and third grade of high school, each grade I had to upload videos. For me and with English, and I think most English teachers that are here in Korea can agree, for us, the best way to do the online classes was through actual videos of us speaking, because our job is usually conversational English. So, you know, they have Korean English teachers and from them, the main things that they learn are things like grammar and writing. Um, but for us as the native speakers, it's really important to practice speaking and listening because they want that native element. So, you know, to get that through online classes, it kind of has to be through these videos. So for me in my classes, it was a lot of effort to make these videos. I actually posted a few of the better ones. They weren't that great, unfortunately, um, in my channel. So if you want to look at those, um, I do have some of those on my page. If you're curious about what some of the online lessons looked like, you're more than welcome to look at them. Uh, but for me, I had to make a lesson, 
I recorded myself doing it and then I would edit those videos because there's different levels for all the students. So I wanted to make sure that I was putting in subtitles, I was maybe doing some of the Korean words for some of the more difficult uh, vocabulary words. I wanted to do pictures and I really just wanted to make it as easy as possible and as interesting as possible because um, you know, for a lot of students, they don't really like English class. They don't really want to do it. So to do it as self-learning is a little bit more difficult. With that, with each video, we had to do an assignment. So within my speaking video, I would explain the assignment. I would usually give an example and I would tell them like, next class or by Wednesday, you need to upload this paper. My school, and I think most schools in Korea, were using EBS online, and it's just kind of like a platform that the schools use. The students can go on there, they click their province, city, and then school, and then the grades and classes are all in there. And so we would upload our lessons there. So I would make a handout and the answer key. So my co-teachers um, would upload my video with like a little description. Then we would upload the um, handout, and then the like the next day we would upload the answer key so they could check it. Uh, that was for first and second. And third grade, it was usually not like um, worksheets like that. It was more uh, research kind of papers, so they would just submit their papers. I also started implementing YouTube videos because it got too much, and I was making. Um, multiple videos a week and at one week I end up having to make 14 worksheets, seven handouts, seven answer keys and it just got too much to be making all of the videos and editing them and all those handouts so my co-teacher said like it was okay if I would find a YouTube video and then I would make a supplementary assignment for that video. For third grade we also started doing Zoom. So many teachers here in Korea, they had one-on-one um, -on -one or live chats with their students through different things. Zoom was really popular. Um, I also know that like Naver and Naver Band and those kinds of uh, platforms were used. But for me and the amount of students I have, that just isn't possible. Uh, so I only did this with my third grade students and it was just volunteers so my co-teachers would give them the topic and then we would get volunteers for who wanted to join and then we would make groups from those and then I would do about 15 minute um, group zoom meetings with them and we would talk and I would take notes about uh, what they said and their pronunciation and that kind of thing and it was just something extra that we could put into their file for when they have to go off to college with my girls school my branch school because i still have to do everything for my branch schools uh they were a little bit different and all i did with my branch school was my co-teacher asked if anybody wanted to do one-on-one -on -one talking with me i had seven students volunteer so every tuesday which is when i go to my branch school every tuesday i would use cacao video chat and i would video chat with my students uh, the week before i would give them topic I would create a big handout for them that had the questions I would ask and then example answers. I would tell them how to answer, give them an example, and then give them vocabulary. And it was up to them to kind of figure out their own answers. So one time it was uh, likes and dislikes, opinions, school life, uh, things that motivate and inspire you. So I would give them the questions and then the example answers. And that was really fun and I got to know several, seven, of the students before they came back to school and it was really great. Um, for me and my school, they were really supportive of all the teachers during this time. So they were constantly asking in our cacao group chat for teachers' inputs on what was needed to um, support this online learning. They bought all of the teachers uh, the phone stands so they can um, you know, hook your phone like a tripod. They also bought mics for the classes. They bought some of the tablets that have the, the pen so that you can write on it and it shows up on the computer screen. They just bought different things like that for teachers to use. Since I was doing the videos, I received the phone stand and then I used my own iPad and software to do the editing. 
but you know each teacher did something a little bit different each subject did something a little bit different so that was just me and I know that each school for my friends also had different things some didn't get any kind of materials like that but I did thankfully so that was really nice now so that was online and that was from about April 9th till about May 20th so if you remember what I said at the beginning school was originally supposed to start on March 23rd we didn't actually come back to school until May 20th almost two months <laughs> it was pushed back in school and that was still really kind of controversial for many people they didn't want to come back so what they did was we had many, many things in place, and I'm going to explain what that is. For high school, third graders came back on May 20th, that's a Wednesday. The next Wednesday on May 27th, the second graders came back. And then the next Wednesday, which was June 3rd, the first graders came back. So they staggered it to kind of help ease into it, I guess, a little bit, I don't know. <laughs> Another thing that they started doing, Everybody has to wear a mask. So teachers, students, faculty, everybody has to wear a mask. That is really, really important. They provide masks if the students don't have them. They gave us the masks. I got a really cool clear mask that actually is really awesome. Um, they also have a video camera set up when you come into the second floor doors because they lock all the other doors now. So you have to come up to the second floor and they have a video camera and a thermometer and that's where they take your temperature. But this is, um, like, I just do that one, but the students have two uh, temperature points. So when they come in the gate, they have to take their temperature and do hand sanitizer. And then the second floor, they do their um, temperature again. We also have to take temperature of every student before they go to lunch. So fourth period, um, my co-teachers have to take the temperature of every student before they can go to lunch. We also have been implementing the six feet rule. So in the hallway, they kind of have stickers along the floor. And then in the classroom, we had these little red stickers that we had to put um, with each desk so that all the desks were in the proper spacing in the classroom. And so that if they kind of get moved around, we know where to move them back to. We also cannot do any partner or group work, which for English conversation class is super hard and super difficult so that's been a struggle <laughs> and lunchroom and computer labs they have uh, veils kind of like plastic like dividers for the students as well so these things have been put into place to kind of help alleviate that risk now for classes one of the things like I said we can't do group work we can't do partner work so for English conversation it's really difficult and it has created more work I know for like me and my friends because mm, at least I mean definitely for me because all of the activities I had planned for this year all the activities that I've have done and have prepared from the last year and a half I can't really use or I have to modify because most of it is partner and group work which we can't do <laughs> so that has made it kind of more challenging for me I guess, you know, silver lining is I have new material and I know that I can thrive under pressure. Yeah. <laughs> oh. The overall atmosphere is not too bad. When the students first came back, uh, their first day on that Wednesday was definitely rough because, I mean, the students haven't been in school for two months and most of them didn't really want to come back. For some of them, they really like online learning. They like studying by themselves. Some, they really did not like it, so they were happy to be back. For me, I really, really enjoyed it because as a, as the English teacher, the best part I think about the job, again, this is just my opinion, for me, the best part of the job is when I get to have my classes, you know, when I get to talk to the students, when I get to interact with them, because when they're not there, I'm just sitting at my desk all day by myself not talking to anybody and who likes that not me so like I said uh, that was only the second part <laughs> we're going to be implementing a new thing starting after our midterms midterms are this coming week and I'm so upset <laughs> we're going to be doing one week in school one week online so that's 
not just that that's not the end of it okay they're going to be doing it based on their grade level so like let's say third graders on you know there's four weeks right so third graders they'll be in school online in school uh oh and I, oh. In school, online, in school, online. But first and second graders are gonna be online, in school, online, in school. So for me, personally, I'm not excited about that because I teach first, second, and third grade mixed within each day for the most part. So it's just going to be super confusing for me. It's for me personally, I think it's going to be difficult to have the dates for when I need to upload assignments and that kind of a thing. And I'm just not excited about not having my students because that's literally like the one thing that makes my job amazing. So that is kind of what I've been dealing with for me personally with uh, teaching here in Korea throughout this coronavirus, COVID-19 happening. I do know for people who are thinking about coming, there are some things that you should think about and that you should know. I know for this epic intake, many cities and provinces have stopped accepting people from outside of Korea. I am in the Gyeongsangbuk-do province and I know that our province, the largest province, is no longer accepting applications for people outside of Korea. So that means that if Epic is going to place anybody within Gyeongsangbuk-do for this new Epic intake, it's going to be from within Korea, not from outside of Korea. I've also heard that I think Daegu and Busan might also be doing this. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm pretty sure about Daegu, but I'm not sure about Busan. But I do know that those two just because I'm in the Gyeongsangbuk-do province and Daegu is super close to me. Um, so just keep that in mind that positions might not be available for people outside of Korea. If you're within Korea, it might be a little bit easier because uh, some of these schools or hagwons might have been planning to take people from outside Korea and now they can't. So keep that in mind. Just everything in general is just kind of different. It's not just us foreign teachers who are confused and adjusting and learning, it's also the Korean teachers. They have a lot of stress and a lot of pressure put on them because they also don't really know what's going on. It's also new for them. They're also learning as it goes. So just kind of the attitude and atmosphere within the schools is just a little bit different because everybody's kind of scattered. Everybody's trying really hard to adjust. And so everybody just kind of has this mentality of like, I don't really know what's going on. Ah, don't ask me. <laughs> so also keep that in mind. <laughs> So overall, uh, it definitely has been an uh, experience teaching in Korea during this pandemic, but I've definitely learned a lot about me as a teacher as well as just me, myself, and I am very thankful for that. I wish everybody luck. If you are a teacher here in Korea and your experience has been similar or different, please let me know. I'm sure that the people who are watching this are also curious for any more information that you can give. Um, if you are planning to come to Korea, I'm curious about how everything that's kind of happened has affected your experience or your attitude about coming here. And for anybody who's watching this, just because you're curious, hey, welcome. <laughs> All right, so until next time, thank you, stay safe and healthy.